I just can't believe it. After all these months that I would forget the Limpkin in my last video. The Limpkin. I don't know what to say. So in this episode of Lake Log, we're going to find the Limpkin and we're going to apologize. I'm going to apologize in person. My name is Dean and this is Lake Log. There's a Limpkin right there. I'm gonna see if I can get to him and apologize. Excuse me. I'm Dean from Lake Log. I just wanted to say I'm sorry for leaving you out of my last video. It wasn't very polite of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm apologizing, okay? You don't have to get all bent out of shape. Just want to apologize. That's all. Have a great day. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Well, that went well. So the Limpkin I just apologized to is right around the corner and he's a little agitated. But anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is the apple snail, real common around here. Unfortunately, it's an invasive species and non-native, but the Limpkin diet is almost exclusively these things. This is an amphibious snail. It has both a lung and a gill, so it can breathe in the water and out of the water. Uh, during dry periods, it can bury itself in the mud and stick up like a little periscope and breathe air. It lays its eggs out of the water to avoid predation from fish. And so you see the eggs on man-made structures and you also see it on the bases of the plants, the aquatic plants that stick up. Um, there's lots of apple snail egg clusters everywhere and empty shells as well. Limpkins are peculiar. They're like that date you have that's really beautiful until they start laughing. <laughs> Limpkin is called a limpkin because of the way it walks. Uh, it kind of limps along. I don't know, I don't really see that. It's also called the crying bird. More closely related to the cranes than anything else because of its bone structure. And I'll be honest with you, one of the easier birds to photograph out here. They don't have a lot of natural enemies except for alligators. And so you can get pretty close to them as long as you don't make any sudden moves. They're pretty tolerant. Anyway, as I was saying before, the Limpkin's main diet is the apple snail. And one thing that I found out that's really amazing is that they have a beak that is specifically adapted to getting the snail out of the shell without breaking it. And so that's why there's completely intact snail shells everywhere. And so the Limpkin is like the master thief who can take the jewel from the museum without even setting off the alarm. Getting back to the limpkin. There goes another one. We just wait a second. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Excuse me. Don't go, wait. Now they're taunting me. Look, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for leaving you out of my last video, but this video is completely about the Limpkin, right? So you're gonna love it. You're gonna absolutely think this is the greatest thing ever. Where are you going? I think it's only fair to end this episode with a confession. 
I haven't always been a Limpkin fan. Limpkin, really? It sounds like some kind of proper English gentleman. Pleased to meet you, my name is Alfonso Limpkin. When we first moved to this area, the springtime mating call of the Limpkin was particularly annoying to me. Once, when my kids were small and my wife and I were particularly sleep deprived, I stormed out of the house at about 4 a.m., walked across the street and threw a stick into a tree thinking there was a limp in there to scare it away. I know. I feel bad about that. That's it for this episode of Lake Log. I just want to say I apologize to all the Limpkins I have ever met or ever will meet. Excuse me, sir. 